It is the Friday Eve edition of Weather for Weather Geeks here on the 25th day of January 2018. Hope you had a good Thursday. The weather forecast again today left a little to be desired. It was the second straight day where clouds and even a little bit of snow just hung around longer than it should have. And uh, so the forecast was a little bit of a, a bust, kind of a minor bust uh, once again uh, today. Not quite as bad as yesterday, but still, uh, days like today bug me. <laughs> you know, we take we put accuracy at a premium around here, and it's a real important thing to us to to get the forecast right every single day. And when we have uh, two straight days where uh, just things don't go according to plan, it, it sticks in my craw a little bit. Uh, today, the clouds were a problem once again until the very last minute, right before sunset, the sky finally brightened. But this band of cloudiness and even a little bit of flurries uh, falling from those clouds this morning, not not handled well by the modeling and uh, by human forecasters as well. Moving on though and taking a look at the uh, the current radar and satellite loop across the region, pretty quiet across a lot of the country and it's going to be a quiet night uh, region-wide and actually nationwide tonight with the exception of parts of the west. The mild air is building out across the middle of the country though. Temperatures uh, at this uh, mid-evening hour are pretty close to 60 as far north as Topeka and St. Louis around I-70. So that's what's coming our way for tomorrow. It's going to be a much, much better day tomorrow. I forgot to update the two degree guarantee graphic. I will, uh, I'll do that after the video. But uh, yeah, today was uh, an X on the uh, two degree uh, guarantee. Uh, but we're up over 80% still for the month of January so far. Put together this complicated uh, graphic showing the Lake Erie ice cover this season compared to the historical average. Now, typically the ice cover on Lake Erie peaks in February, right around Valentine's Day or a little after, uh, but certainly we've been running above average since about Christmas time right here, right before the new year, and uh, still sitting at uh, close to 80% ice coverage on Lake Erie. Uh, that is a pretty big number for uh, for this early in the season. We've seen a lot of big numbers because of the, uh, the cold weather, of course, that we've had fairly consistently ever since the uh, large scale weather pattern changed right around Christmas time. All right, our big picture for Friday, we're going for a high of 50 on Friday afternoon. That is 17 above average and 17 degrees from the record high of 67. We'll pick up about two minutes and change worth of daylight tomorrow, putting us at nine hours, 53 minutes. We'll be at uh, 10 hours of daylight by late in the weekend and early on next week as the sunsets continue getting later. The sunrises aren't getting earlier at the pace that sunsets get later at this time of the year. There's a little bit of a of a difference there. In other words, uh, the light change is more noticeable in the evening now than it is in the morning, but these things will balance out eventually. Right now, though, we're picking up more daylight at the end of the day than at the beginning of the day. All right, so tomorrow's a winter sunshine all day long. Here's the latest timing on our Saturday front. I think the showers pull in right around lunchtime, maybe noon-ish. And it should rain for a good chunk of the afternoon on Saturday, right into parts of the evening. But overall, the trend has been faster on this uh, rain event for the weekend. Bad news for Saturday, but good news for Sunday, because we're going to get the showers out of here pretty early in the evening on Saturday. And then a little slice of nice here on Sunday will be in between fronts. And so a pretty nice winter day coming up on Sunday. We've got a high of 46 in the forecast and uh, partly to at times mostly sunny sky. This next front is what has the Arctic air behind it, and that is what is coming our way as we go into early next week. Rainfall amounts with our free car wash on Saturday should be pretty modest uh, with the exception of the RPM, which uh, the latest run is a little bit beefier. All of our modeling is generally a quarter of an inch or less. So uh, nothing, nothing crazy there in terms of the rainfall totals on Saturday. Let's talk about next week. Here's the GFS model. And uh, this is just one run of one model, but uh, it has generally a pretty good handle, I think on the overall ideas for next week. Could be a little clipper system on Monday that rolls through, and this could be one of those minor systems that brings us maybe a coating to an inch, maybe two worth of fluffy snow on Monday, maybe just enough to make things slick into Monday night. On Tuesday, probably some lingering flurries and a lot of clouds. With this sort of flow, uh, I'm not going to be fooled again, <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll side on the side of clouds rather than sun with that type of a setup on Tuesday. You never want to be in a big hurry to bring out the sun at this time of the year. We've just been in too big of a hurry over the last couple of days. All right, some intrigue late next week. I think we'll warm up pretty significantly by Wednesday and into Wednesday night ahead of the next system. And this next system looks pretty strong. It'll probably start as rain on Thursday, but and this is a week from now, so don't get caught up in the details. But at some point, Thursday into Thursday night, the first day of February, by the way, 
uh, we probably will see a transition over to snow. Now, depending on the moisture content and the timing and all that sort of stuff, this could be enough to accumulate. This um, would most likely be Thursday night into perhaps Friday uh, morning for Groundhog Day, but all of this is speculation <laughs> at this point. Uh, certainly uh, way too far out for any specifics. This could just be a front that comes through and <clears throat> rain changes the snow at the last minute, no big deal, maybe a minor accumulation, or it could be a slower system with higher moisture content and, and maybe enough to shovel and plow. So that'll be the next fairly big ticket item we'll keep an eye on for the second half of next week. All right, latest uh, long range modeling thoughts here uh, on the European uh, for the pattern changes we had into February. Now, February is likely to be a very, very cold month compared to average out across parts of the prairies of Canada, down through Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota. Uh, there's going to be a battleground, it looks like, at least through the first half of the month between this harsh cold and a ridge which is going to try to hold its ground off the coast of the southeast. Notice the warm anomaly is still holding tight here along the east coast. There's probably going to be a battle zone in here, and this could lead to a pretty stormy pattern for us during the uh, first half of February. And that uh, does not necessarily mean every system will bring snow, but there, there's probably going to be a fair amount of precipitation falling, and it'll just depend on what temperatures are like when that precipitation comes through. But I, I expect a pretty unsettled first half of February. We may not be in the heart of the cold. I think that's going to be out towards the Dakotas, Minnesota, Nebraska, Montana, Wyoming. We not, may not be in the heart of that like we were in late December and at least the first half of January, but we're at least going to be on the fringes of it. And then, uh, you know, still a pretty cold signal for the second half of February as well. So it's looking more and more likely again that uh, February is going to be a colder than average month. Uh, the cold may be more centered over us during the second half of the month. The axis of coldest air compared to average may be out across the Plain States early in February, shifting east later in the month. And it is quite possible that at least the first half of February is fairly stormy. Now, this is the next month's worth of precipitation on that same set of modeling, showing a dry signal out here, wet signal here, and kind of in between here. Now, this may be balanced by a, a wet start to February, a drier end of February. But again, uh, with that type of setup that I just showed you, with uh, warm anomalies along the East Coast, cold anomalies, even some pretty significantly cold anomalies to our West, in between there's going to be a stormy zone, and we could be in that through February. So I'm expecting a cold February and perhaps a stormy one, at least during the first half of the month. Thanks for watching tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll hope to uh, see you tonight on 21 News at 11 and tomorrow evening on 21 News at 6 and 11. If you're up Saturday morning, I'll be guest starring on WFMJ Weekend today, bright and early at 6 a.m. Saturday morning for some reason. Uh, the reason, I guess, is we gave Andrew a day off. So if you're up and at him early Saturday, I will see you then. Hope you have a great Thursday night.